Hello Leo listeners and welcome to another video. So I'm Cara and I help advanced English learners fall back in love with their favourite series and films by breaking free from the subtitles. So over the last few weeks we've been talking TV and different types of TV shows. So as I said last time, as a general rule, not every series is, is the same, but comedies tend to be easier to understand than dramas. In a comedy series, they want you to understand the dialogue and get the joke. And often the dialogue sounds less realistic. It sounds more like it's read from a script. Um, so I'm gonna go walk you through, if you like, um, a clip from one of my favorite sitcoms, which is How I Met Your Mother. So this is a series about um, a young architect, Ted Mosby, who's the guy on the left here, um, and his search for love. So in the series, you hear Ted, future Ted, telling his kids um, about how he met their mother. So we've got the voiceover of the old Ted. Sometimes we see the kids sitting there listening to his stories. And then otherwise, the stories that he tells this is the action in the, in the series. So his young self and his four friends, so Robin, Barney, Lily, and Marshall. And very often they all meet up at a bar called McLaren's to um, see each other and talk about their, their lives. So um, this scene is taken from the sixth season of the series and that's actually where I started watching it. <laughs> I jumped in at the end. Um, so we're going to work on the first minute together. There are no subtitles, unfortunately, for this clip, but I'm going to walk you through and explain the listening difficulties and any vocabulary that's tricky. So just for some context, so Ted is an architect, as I mentioned, and he's supposed to be designing the new building, um, the new building, the new headquarters for Goliath National Bank, which is the bank that his friend Barney works for. And the new headquarters are going to be built on the site of an old hotel. And then Ted decides suddenly that he doesn't want to design the new building. And his friends are surprised because this was supposed to be his big break. So a, a big career opportunity for him and the chance to become um, a well-known architect. So. I want to ask the board at GNB to move the site for the new headquarters so we don't have to tear down a classic old building. I still so um, there's a lot going on in the first seven seconds. One of the things that happens is that Ted mentions the name of the, of the bank, but he uses an abbreviated version. So he calls it GNB. So that's the initials for Goliath National Bank. Now, the first time that I heard this, I thought he was saying G and B. So G and B, because often when we say the word and in fast speech, we reduce it to mm, G and B. But no, it's the headquarters of the, of the, it's the headquarters, it's the initials of the name of the bank, Goliath National Bank. And not GNB makes me think of GNT, gin and tonic. So when we shorten that, it sounds like um, GNT. Um, right, what else was going on in the first section? I want to ask the board at GNB to move the site for the new headquarters so we don't have to tear down a classic. Okay, so in that section, uh, just before, Ted says, so we don't have to, so we don't have to tear down. Um, the hotel. So here everything gets very squashed together because we have lots of unstressed words. So instead of sounding like so we don't have to, it sounds like so we don't have to, so we don't have to. So here he's deleting some sounds and joining um, some together. So that's a really good example of the type of kind of squashed expression you would hear in, um, in fast speech. We've also got some good examples from his friend Barney in the next part. The old building. I still don't get this. Why, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, do you want to ruin? Wait a minute. Okay, so here there are lots of expressions that um, that get linked um, and shrunk together. So um, we started off with all of a sudden, all of a sudden, 
all of a sudden. So those first three words in that expression, they all get kind of joined together and shrunk down. Um, there was also out of nowhere and Barney pronounced it as out of, out of nowhere. So that's classic for the expression out, out of something, out of nowhere in this case. So that means um, that it's a surprise. Um, there was also, do you want to ruin? So instead of want to, he says wanna, that's pretty classic. And then at the end, he uses the expression, wait a minute, wait a minute. So in his American accent, he makes the ter sound on wait, sound like a D. So it becomes wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's the girl? So Barney asks the question, who's the girl? So um, the series is all about Ted's search for love and his friends know that a lot of his decisions are motivated because of um, women, <laughs> basically. So that's why Barney makes this comment. What? I get, there's no girl. Why would you even? So it's funny in this section, those last three seconds, um, so all his friends are accusing him of choosing to drop the, the Goliath National Bank project because of a girl. And Ted starts kind of hesitating and repeating himself and stumbling over his words, as you might do in a, in a normal conversation. Her name is Zoe. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so Barney's reaction is just to ask the question, boobs. So this is an informal word for breasts. And as Barney is the womanizer of the group, he is um, obviously interested in the physical features of this new um, person that, that Ted has met. So we're going to see her next. Beautiful building, right? Look, mister, you are very convincing. Uh, I am very flattered, confused even, but I'm not looking for Not a drag queen. Okay, so there are a couple of things we need to explain. So this is um, Ted meeting this new woman, Zoe, for the first time. They are standing opposite the Arcadian, which is the hotel that the bank wants to destroy so that Ted can build the new building for the, the bank headquarters on, on the site. Now, what you need to know um, is that the area where the hotel is situated is full of transvestite prostitutes. So that's why Ted says to Zoe, sorry, mister, because he assumes that she's a transvestite. And that's why she replies, I'm not a drag queen. But you definitely have me rethinking this eyeshadow. Right, what she says next, is very hard to catch. She says, but you definitely have me rethinking this eyeshadow. So um, she reduces the first two words. It sounds a bit like buya, buya. <laughs> Pretty classic for um, those words. Now on definitely, what she does is she drops some of the syllables. So it goes from definitely to definitely, definitely. And we do that quite a lot in English with um, certain adverbs, like actually, we pronounce it more like Ashley in fast speech when we're going very, very fast. And Zoe does something similar here. Um, have me as well in the middle is very reduced. And also this eyeshadow joins together. This eyeshadow, eyeshadow is what you put on your eyes to make them look pretty. Okay, and the whole transvestite joke also explains Ted's line in the next section. Not only is she funny, hot, and genetically female, but get this. <laughs> okay, so Ted just used, um, Ted just did a few things. So he said that, you know, Zoe is hot, which means sexually attractive, and she's also genetically female because he learned that she's not a transvestite prostitute, as he initially thought. <laughs> um, now, just before we cut back to the scene with Zoe and Ted, Ted said to his friends, but get this. So get this is an informal expression in English that means pay attention. And you usually use it when you have something um, surprising to tell people. It's a, bit like, um, it's a bit like saying, guess what, as well. It functions in a, in a similar way. Okay, in this next bit, um, Zoe is going to use some um, 
difficult vocabulary that, to be honest, I didn't really um, recognize because she's um, drawing Ted's attention to the architectural features of the Arcadian Hotel. Windows, the rusticated stonework, the marble cornices. So she mentions Palladian windows. Don't know what that is, type of window. Rusticated stonework and marble cornices. So even if you don't know what those terms mean, um, you're not surprised by what Ted said next, which is... She's an architecture nerd! Okay, so he's, he's really pleased because he's an architect and she must be into architecture because she uses this kind of really specific terminology to, to describe um, the building. Ah, an architecture nerd! That's the dream! Whose dream? Okay, so it's, it's a dream according to, um, to Ted, although Barney is a bit more skeptical, not such a fan of architecture. So if you want to know more about this episode, um, I'm going to link to the clip. Um, you can also find the full transcript of the episode on genius.com. And there's also a How I Met Your Mother wiki, which is really useful for um, just checking um, the plot of the episode to make sure you've understood. And if you've enjoyed this walkthrough, then I think you would enjoy my program, Freedom from Subtitles. This is my four week individual program where I help my students um, break free from subtitles for their favorite series. And one of the activities that we do is that I share videos like this with them where I walk them through the difficult bits um, in, in the clips from the series that they want to understand. So for more information on that, you can go to the Learn With Me section of my website and I'll link um, to where that is under this video. All right, thanks very much, very much for watching. If you have any other questions about the clip or about anything I've talked about, then you can ask me in the comments. All right, thanks for watching, bye-bye.